All right, in this video, I'm going to be changing the battery on a Ford Focus 1.5 TDCI. That's Mark 3.5, so we're looking at 2015 for my car. Okay, negative terminals there. You can always disconnect the negative terminal if you're trying to do anything electrical. Uh, it doesn't affect the car when you put it back on. Like the radio doesn't go off with a, you needing a code or a mobiliser kick in or anything like that. So, pull the tabs here and here, and the lid comes off. Now what I'm going to do, you can see that there's a need to replace the battery here, if you can see the crusty deposit just on top. Alright, I am going to be doing one of my key things, keeping putting a receipt in the bag and taping the receipt onto something. I was going to put it underneath but I thought it might cause problems with the uh, gas exchange or the cooling of the battery. But on top is fine. The reason is it's a five year guarantee on this new battery from Halfords and it's the cheapest one I can find with the longest guarantee. Five years. It's only £110 at EFB110. EFB110 is the code of the battery you need. So here it is. We know we've got our battery receipt in there. Alright, so I put that away. Put a magnetic tray on the floor. I wouldn't these days put a magnetic tray too much near any electronics on a car. Maybe you might get away with the side of the, the uh, fender, the side of the body, but definitely not anywhere near the engine. Some of the tools I'll be using extension bar, quarter inch ratchet, 7mm socket, and a sorted kind of socket size, especially the 7mm. I probably need the 10mm in a minute. Right, so, using this handy tool. Don't forget the magnetic tool. Keep it in your hand. I think to give myself more room because it's kind of have to slide out this way. They've refused to do this job even though it's marked as a, a doable job at Halfords. Even though I wouldn't ask them to do it anyway. They refused to do this job at Halfords. They said it's too difficult. You know, you, you, you pay them £20, pounds, they're not willing to do it. So, so we'll have, you'll have to do it yourself anyway, in other words, if you buy a, a battery for the Ford Focus. So I'll take my, this opportunity to thank all my viewers, all my subscribers through the years. So of course this is, unscrew these 7mm bolts to take your air box out and your filter. Could be an opportunity to clean the MAFS sensor. Although I'll have a look at it and see if it needs cleaning. It is an opportunity. Don't use any old thing apart from electrical cleaner because it will damage it. So let's get the battery off. You need either a ring span or a deep socket. 13. Be careful because when you attach these sort of uh, terminals you can cause sparks but luckily it's quite far away from the battery. But saying that though, if you get a really bad battery and it's leaking lots of hydrogen, it might cause a pop. Of course retain that. Oh, you, you, I should retain it. Partially back in. Now we need to tape that. Don't let it touch. Because we don't want that terminal touching anything. It's electrical tape only. That's fine. Black for the black terminal. cover all of it, I just noticed there was a metal exposed bit there, cover that bit as well, so all metal is covered. Now let's concentrate on the air box. Now the air box, 
that comes off like that. Of course the sensor can come out sometime. I only ever remember four screws, I don't remember a fifth one, but it's not seeming to budge. In that case, we're not going to force it, because you never know, your memory might not serve. It's moving slightly now. The box out. You saw a leaf fall in there, we'll get that in a minute. So these are idiot proof, which what I mean by that is, you can unscrew them and to a certain point. You can keep unscrewing it, it will come out, but you can unscrew them, you'll find them loosening up. You will not need to, to unscrew them any further than they keep. Filter. So we're looking down. Plug the sensor. Math sensor. I think this just pops that right out. But before that, uh, you'll need to take that out. And, uh, I've done it so many times that's it's falling straight out. There is a vacuum pipe just there that needs to come out. So I'm going to undo this. Hopefully, this will pop out with it. Right in there, there's one of them rubber kind of bungs that sit in a plastic lug. So pull that upwards. This possibly might be connected in yours. You may have to disconnect that, but on mine I've already kind of taken it out ages ago. So we can leave that, leave that. I've undone these and I've done, done, done that. And it, I've lifted it. So now I need both my hands wiggle and uh, let's have a look of course it's stuck here as well hear that sitting on rubber lugs and I'm only doing this to give myself more space you can actually one of the ways you can do it is take this pipe off it's ten times easier which I should have done Press it. Okay, do things logically. Take another pipe off. There we go. So, how do we know which way is which? Let's see, try and remember it. There is a little notch there. That notch is on the notch. I can feel an airbox just here. So, the notch goes airbox side. Just in case. Next, pop out the vacuum pipe. Please don't forget to reattach. You're going to get errors. Look in the eyes. Something hard. Make sure there's nothing else connected. There must be something connected to that hole. It must be maybe the side of that. Maybe. Maybe. You can see. So it comes off. Math sensors in there. Uh, I'm not going to take it off, but is it worth, what do you think? Is it worth cleaning? Yeah, I'll give that a little spray down if I've got anything. Not a bad idea to put a clean plastic bag over, and not stuff it in in case you forget. Just like that. You never know, that's the turbo. Of course, clean the other end of the pipe, nice and clean. Okay, so that's off, that's off. Now, looking at this, let's have a look down here as well. Definitely, I've looked down here often. Okay, 
Right, okay. So, you can see two there, they can push, they're, they're all holding these down. They've already been cut, so it's been replaced before. So, next logical step, get this off. Get, use a 10 mil, get that off, wrap it up with tape. I'm pulling on that and it kind of came out so that is held in here if I pull that up and I dislodge that there is a plug there pull the plug dislodge that that should kind of flop forward and look someone's really cut that and never replaced it which means it's already been done before One, one left in here, just I'm gonna wedge it behind here, just put a screwdriver in there and that should pop out to wedge it out. So just here, where well, it was held in here, here, here. Sometimes these come out nicely, sometimes they don't at all. That's nice. That's out. So we're clear now. Let's get that one off. Okay, wrap the positive terminal in red tape, electrical tape. It kind of, I've been feeling prizing a bit. These caps here. I wonder if they'd be so kind. They have a similar thing down below. Oh, I can see there's a very similar looking kind of catch. So notice how easily that popped up here and there's one there and there's also one see it is there my fingers pointing whoops there and I don't know don't know about that side yes there's one over there as well on the right hand side so those are the little, <coughs> little latches for now. get the easier ones out first change your battery on this car no wonder will not be done for 20 pounds In there. This is interesting, you should see this. Look at all that. I've never known it like that before. And look, it's starting to lift. Never known one like that. Here's the main connection with the engine, of course. Here's all these auxiliary ones, including a very delicate looking white cable just there. So I've got to be careful. I'm going to take the opportunity to put one of those caps on that battery on that actual battery terminal. Notice on the side here, there seems to be a catch. And that's where it was kind of partially lifting off and then kind of stopping, right? Uh, so this cap came from the new, the new battery. I wonder if I can lift. Lift the weight. So this side lifts quite easily. This side, can you catch them? That does a 
same thing. difficult just fiddly for the first time trying it it sits like that and that's much more accessible now so I'll get them two 10 mils off in deep socket okay the bracket comes off yeah that side comes off and that exposes even more what's that funny looking thing there's a funny looking thing over that negative battery terminal see it a white box I think I need a shallow socket 10 mil on that terminal and it should start sliding out after unscrewing the 10mm, didn't even unscrew it that much, came off and it, this cable fits on that little loop there, a little notch, so this there, that's it. So I'm just moving that to one side and it goes to the side quite nicely. Keep it out of the way, keep it down there. Alright, I'm going to get the other cap and put it on whilst I'm removing it. It's on there. Right, so, as you see me lifting, I'll say my goodbyes. Lifting this up. Nothing much else to it. And it fits. Here we go. Careful not to scratch any paintwork. So, thanks for watching. Uh, if you're not really a subscriber, please think about subscribing, leave any comments below. And I appreciate, like I said, all you guys that watch my shows, watch my videos and support me. I'm just going to rub this off. Enhanced flooded 75 amp hours, 700 amps SAE T7. Finish, so it's a Ford battery, 175404, one part number CC1. Tango 10655 Bravo Alpha 12 volts 135 RC RQ. So I'm replacing it not with a Ford but with the equivalent. Just as I was about to put the new battery, I noticed it was flooded with liquid just there. And I say liquid, I don't think that's water, I think that's battery acid. So I've soaked a lot of it up. It's not burning my skin or anything, but the one way you can tell about acid is don't don't do this. Let me do it. Unless you've got litmus paper, it should taste sour. No, that's not. It's it's just rainwater because that tastes nothing. Alright. Of course don't forget to put the caps back on whilst you're kind of installing it because I'm doing that one next, but keep this cap on for safety reasons and obviously the installation is the reversal of fitting I can't think of any any reason why not right so one last thing I haven't had the chance to warm up the car but um, I'm gonna put a description you know everything should run fine so it starts up normally that's fine only thing you need to do is to change the clock Press the clock thing there, and uh, just change your weather time is correct for you at the time. And that's it, really. Thanks for watching.